And what are typically the barriers that you encounter trying to integrate these? Well, there are some technological barriers, but, but really the, the main barriers are, uh, let's say, sort of political inertia and conventional economics. Uh, because conventional economics tends to work on very short timescales, we find that we can often develop very good solutions that have a payback period of sometimes, sometimes as short as four years, but more commonly five, six, seven years. And that really shouldn't be a problem. But unfortunately it is. For conventional economists, that's considered too long. But I really think that if we're to address some of the major challenges of our age, we're going to have to get used to planning over a, a longer time scale. What are the most important principles to take into account when doing nature-inspired design? I, th I think it's important to, to think about what happens to the building in 30, 40, 50 years' time. So if we're to think about how buildings are changed and um, dismantled and turned into new buildings, then that is a really important thing to think about, to think about the kind of materials you use and how you put them together. I, I think it's really important to think about how you can bring activities and technologies together in symbiotic ways so that they, they benefit from each other. Uh, I think it's essential that we think about people and, and their, their needs at a physical uh, but as well as an emotional and psychological level. I mean that's a fundamental really for, for architects. And perhaps it's, it's also good to remember that biomimicry doesn't have all the answers. You know, there are certain dimensions that it can't necessarily help with. So mm -hmm. there are very important cultural and historical dimensions to architecture yeah. that need to be part of a, a really integrated approach. Yeah. Biomimicry is really good at solving functional challenges. We like to work with people that are polymaths. Mm -hmm. So I think when a design team works at its best is when the sort of boundaries uh, get blurred and you know sometimes you'll have the biologist talking like an engineer and you'll have the engineer talking like a landscape architect and 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 that's when it becomes a really sort of rich and enjoying um, a really rich and enjoyable conversation yeah